Uh, we're excited about hosting the ACCs this weekend. It's Friday. When the men's race is at 1040. Women's are at 1130. 15 teams in the ACC on both sides. And we're actually fortunate that the ACC in cross country may be the strongest conference in the country. Uh, we have more teams that are nationally ranked than any other conference. Uh, on the women's side, we have the number one team in the country in NC State. And um, on the men's side, we have a seventh place team in Wake Forest. Um, for Virginia, um, we will have a uh, we'll have strong men's and women's team. And the looking ahead to the future, this is an opportunity for us to run a new course, which will be the site for the 2023 NCAA championship. Um, Coach, going off of y'all's weekend or y'all's win, I guess two weekends ago, talk a little bit about the momentum this team has going into ACC championship. Yeah, on the women's side, um, I think what's happened is we have been able to progress really well throughout the year. It's all been about a process, and the way we look at the uh, at this season is we look at these three meets: the ACC the NCAA regional event, which will be in Louisville, Kentucky, and then the NCAA championships in Stillwater, Oklahoma, as one, one championship portion. Our women and men have good momentum going into this, better than I've seen here in a few years I've been here. And I know it's sophomores kind of leading the way, um, especially for, for the women. Can you speak to their role um, in this and just the progress they've made? It's, it's a great question. Our, um, on our women, what has happened here on the women and the men, what's happened is when I came in, the recruiting was kind of done uh, and everybody had decided where they were going. Then we had two years of COVID where we recruited everybody over Zoom. So this is actually the first time that we have a fully recruited team on both sides. And uh, with Margot Appleton, Mia Barnett, uh, those two have done a great job at the national level, so we're excited to see what they can do once they really uh, get on the line on uh, on Friday. And going off of that, Margot Appleton, um, I think was what the she got her third fastest or the third fastest time at Panorama Farms uh, two weeks ago. Speak specifically to her progress and her her dominance this season. Yeah, Margot has really. Uh, perform well. She was a, a, a good high school runner, but she's come, she'd become a really good collegiate runner, and now we need to move to the next step where she becomes a great uh, collegiate runner, and I think that she has all the tools to be able to accomplish that. Uh, you know, I think when you put together the, uh, the team from NC State who will go out and take the pace, I think that you'll find that the uh, race will be very fast, and I think she has an opportunity to really do something special. Talk a little bit about the significance of hosting not only ACCs but NCAs next year as well. Now, this is a, this is a running community, and uh, for us to be able to host ACC championships and catapult that into the NCAAs in 23, I think it gives this community, along with the University of Virginia, an opportunity to own a great cross-country course and a community that will rally around this. So it's, it's significant. We have a, uh, we've had two good meets this year on a new course. Now we have the ACCs. Then we have the pre-national meet, which will be here next year. It will ho we will have about 100 teams here from around the country. So um, I think that should speak to the significance of, uh, of the ACC meet here this weekend. And obviously the course has changed a little bit over time, but given the success that your team has had racing here in Charlottesville, how encouraging is that going into postseason play? Yeah, I think that uh, cross country is, is, a, is a sport that it, it doesn't really as a home field advantage. The only home field advantage is really the people who come out and who are partisan. Uh, for the University of Virginia, and uh, we're hoping that we'll have a big crowd out there and that they will all be partisan. Anything else? Good. 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 Great. Coach, I would ask uh, just one more question. You know, on the men's side, you guys have a, a really competitive field there. Um, you've got, again, more a group of strong veterans that have run really well at the pack this year. 
around. Can you talk a little bit about them and, and how they stack up? Yeah, on the men's side, uh, you know, you can have a number of different strategies that a team can employ. You either have really upfront uh, runners or you have a pack. You're only as good as your fifth person. So if we can keep our pack together, I think that provides us with the best opportunity to be good. The advantage on the, that we have on the men's side, we don't have a designated first runner, I think. We have seven or eight or nine or ten guys who could in any given day be our number one runner and put us in a great position for us as a, as a, as a team. And I think that really serves us well. The bigger the meet, so at the NCAAs, that's probably our best position to be in.